tonight's interesting. We have an interesting guest. But before we get started, I'd like you to have other ways that you can connect with us. Of course, you can connect with us through broadcastteamalpha.com. You can connect with us at Facebook. We have a group on Facebook, Broadcast Team Alpha, and we have, of course, our page. In addition to that, you can connect with us um, on a Sunday afternoon, if you're not doing too much, around two o'clock Eastern time, we get together for a mastermind. It's a bunch of really amazing, brilliant, creative, out of the box thinking people. And we get together and we, combined, uh, we combine our thought energy to intend good things for the world, benevolent things. You know, we've, we've worked on weather patterns, we've worked on COVID, we've worked on the vaccine, Ooh, shouldn't say that, we worked on that. Um, we've worked on general health and well-being, we've worked on envisioning peace around the world, and we would love for you to join us to get some information about that or to get invited to a Sunday Mastermind meeting. Just send an email to themastermindconnection at gmail.com, themastermindconnection at gmail.com. We're so grateful that you're here with us. We are grateful for your generosity. Thank you for using the super chat function. It's always such a, it's like Christmas when that happens for us. So thank you for that. So we have an interesting guest, Augie. Can you tell oh. us about our guest tonight? Oh, yes, I will. We are doing that. <laughs> this is going to be really special. Uh-huh. I tell you, uh, this we haven't done very many times, and I will have the total enjoyment of introducing the new guest tonight. And the guest is my co-host, Nori. So... How about that? It's just the two of us again. How about that? Yeah. And uh, I know that uh, most people out there, because you have been on shows everywhere just about, So, uh, but for the two or three of them out there that don't know you, I want to say a few things about you. And uh, we have been, uh, Nori and I have been doing, actually, I just looked at it here about 30 minutes ago, and I found our first show is well over three and a half year ago. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, and I want to say also that she is probably one of the sharpest people I know because uh, she has some skills in many different areas, and I've learned a lot from her. I want to say some, just a little bit more. Her professional journey has been on exploration and realizing and grounding her calling through healing, entrepreneurship, innovation, writing, coaching and healing artistry. And uh, she is a, a registered nurse and a licensed such. And uh, she is a double certified law of attraction coach. And that is the majority of what we're going to talk about tonight, because that is so important and people really don't understand a lot about it, how it works and why it works. And we're going to dive into that. And she is also a certified hypnotherapist. And uh, she may not admit to it, but she kind of specializes in time regression. Under hypnosis, take people back into the past, even before they were born, to find out what were going on in their spiritual life back there. And actually, she's doing something that I don't know if I have heard anybody else doing, and that is to also take them forward in time to meet themselves. Now, that's unique, folks. You, you, you got to look into this. That's fun. And uh, she's also a Reiki master, and she is doing long distance Reiki. And as well, that is one thing that we should consider, all of us listening here, get on her list. If you have any ailments at all, I don't care if it's a sore toe or a toothache, get on the list because she does this. I, I don't know what day it is anymore, but you used to do it on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And where she do long distance Reiki for people. And this from people we hear from has made a difference. So just 
get on the list, talk, contact her on that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that later on. Mm -hmm. And then, Nori, where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was good. Thank you. Thank you for all that. I appreciate it. Nancy sent us a super chat. It's Christmas. Yay. Thank you, Nance. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. So tonight we're going to talk about the law of attraction in action. And this was born out of um, a four week class that we're going to have in August. It was going to be in July, but there was a time snafu. So it's going to be in August. It's going to be every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, August 4th through the end of the month and it's law of attraction in action it's going to be so much fun the secret right the secret pretty much made law of attraction go viral yeah. but you know the secret is great but it didn't tell you everything about law of attraction and a lot of people began to practice you know what they learned in the film and didn't have like all of the results that they thought they would have and started discovering that maybe there's more that should have been said there. So we're going to talk about that tonight, but we're also going to talk about in that in the group and um, in, in the class, but also okay. in the class every week you go home with really cool tools and processes to practice. And the worst thing that could happen if you don't get your manifestation is that your vibration is going to be higher. You're going to feel better. You're going to be happier more often. And how many of us have not been somehow dampened or weighed down? Yeah, I keep pointing to the outside here, right? You know, based on what has gone on in the outside world. So tonight I want to talk about um, law of attraction Law of Attraction is really a secondary universal law. It's secondary to Law of Vibration. So we're going to talk about the Law of Vibration, but I just wanted to talk to you about the universal laws. Uh, Dr. Warner Von Braun, the father of the space program, said that the natural laws of the universe are so precise that we have no difficulty building a spaceship sending people to the moon, and we can time the landing within a fraction of a second. He said as a result of that and all that he studied, I mean, he was, he was an aerospace engineer and, you know, a key player in the rocket development. He said that the laws of the universe must have been set by someone. Science totally and religion, because we're going to get into the someone, science and religion used to be pretty antagonistic, right? They were, you know, total bumping heads. But now it's more like it's the study of cause and effect. And they're slowly coming together, right? The science of energy, the science of the universal laws coming together with religion. After studying the spectacular mysteries of the cosmos, Warner von Braun arrived at the firm conviction that there is a God. What if the laws of, of the God, right, the laws of the universe, were created as God's modus operandi? Those laws were given to us for us to express ourselves through on the planet, which gives joy to God, right? my 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 belief anyway yeah so the secret was based on the law of attraction i have a lot of notes here it went viral everybody was talking about law of attraction but it really wasn't deeply understood and the law of attraction like i said before is secondary to the primary law 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 of vibration my new york accent is trying to come out so the law of vibration says that everything in the universe moves. Nothing is at rest. Like Bob Proctor said, we live in an ocean of motion. 
the trees are energy, they're moving, the leaves are moving, the cement is moving, our bodies are moving, our clothes are moving. It's all energy, but it's energy at different, different vibratory rates. Our body, your body, is a molecular structure at a rate of very high vibration. Our brain is an electronic switching station. Our brain doesn't think for us. We think, but we use the brain to think with. We think. As we activate our brain cells, I'm going to explain this a little bit better, so bear with me. As we activate our brain cells, we set up a vibration in our body, right? So if we look at all that stuff that's going on and go, ew, that's horrible. Ooh, that could happen. We're setting up that vibration in our body. And the way that we perceive things and interpret it with our brain sets up the vibration in our body. This speaks directly to epigenetics, right? When we think, when we imagine our body as healthy and vibrant and, you know, just impeccable dynamic health, then the vibration meets that. But I love, this is so interesting. So to move our hand, we activate our brain cells. Without doing that, our hand wouldn't move. If a person has had a stroke where the blood stops going to a certain part of the brain, then the movement controlled by that part of the brain, right? So the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. Let's, see, let's say that the, the stroke happened on the right side and it affected the part with the hand. Well, then those cells are gonna die. We can't evoke that vibration in the body. And what happens? The, arms, the hand and the arm stops moving. This is how phenomenal the law of vibration really, really is. I don't know if you guys are talking. I'm going to get to your questions or your comments later. So vibration is something that must be understood if we're going to take control of our health, if we're going to take control of our relationship, if we're going to take control of our job, our livelihood, the way that we make money. So if we want to master the art of what we've come here to do, right? We've all come here to do something amazing. We have to understand the law of vibration. If you think about like a phenomenal salesperson, right? So I'm going back to Think and Grow Rich, right? Napoleon Hill talked about the best salesperson is a person. Okay, this is interesting. The best salesperson is a person who is very sexual. Like, whoa, what did he say? This was way back in what, the 1920s, the, 19, the 1940s, right? 30s, 40s. And that's because when the person who is sexual, they have that vibration going within them. It's not necessarily lustful, sexual, looking at that person, you know, who they're going to sell something to, but it's got that vibration of, of curiosity and interest, and that attracts other people. And it's not lustful. It's not like, you know, I want to, you know, do this to you. It's just that that person's vibration is sexual and sexy. And who doesn't like, like a sexy person kind of almost, but not quite flirting with them. And that attracts people to that kind of a salesperson. So let's talk about the, the art of selling, right? Parents sell children. Children sell parents. A husband sells the wife, right? We're all kind of selling somebody something because we're trying to get them to understand the way that we feel about the point that we're trying to make. So pushy people, right, who are trying to sell you something, they're like, look how good this is. Look how good this is. You're like, no, I don't want to look at that. I'm not, you know, I'm not even interested in that. Why? Because their vibration isn't in sync with yours. If I wanted to sell you a hypnotherapy session, right, I would talk to you. If we were face to face, I'd lean in and look in your eyes. 
I would get to know what's going on for you, what you're feeling, what doesn't feel good for you, right? And then I understand your vibration. And because I'm a good empath and because I'm a healer, there's a part of me that starts to match your vibration. And what happens? Then we come together and see if we can do work together. Well, whether it's a hypnotherapy session, a coaching session, a Reiki session, whatever it is. So the same thing with the things that we want to manifest in life. We want to manifest, I don't know, I don't want to do the red car thing because that's, that's so trite, right? Let's say we want to manifest a phenomenal uh, relationship. And in your mind, you're thinking that the vibration of that relationship is like way up here. So what has to happen for that relationship to begin to come to us? For the, for the cooperative components of the universe to set up the perfect rendezvous that you're in the house eating Chinese food and you forgot to get something to drink. So you, you leave the house you normally wouldn't have. You go to the store. You meet somebody at the, you go to open the refrigerator door at the store and here's some guy going to grab for the handle at the same time and boom, there's your relationship. That's how law of attraction works, but only if you are in that same vibration as the relationship. So you may go, I have no idea what that relationship is and you don't really need to know. The best thing that can happen after we launch an intention for something we want to manifest is that we feel good. That we feel good more minutes a day. Sorry guys, I hit my mic. More hours a day, more days in a week, more weeks in a month. And when we are in the vibration of feeling good, we are rising to the expected vibration of that relationship. And that's how it comes together. It's the same thing, whether you want to get a castle in Scotland or whether you want a red car, right? Or whatever it is, you want to create a new business. You want to write a book. You want to do a screenplay, right? Whatever that vibration is, you don't have to quantify it. You don't have to know what frequency it is when you launch that intention, when you raise your vibration just by feeling good, spend more time walking your dog, spend more time eating ice cream, right? That always raises my vibration. Spend more time petting the cat, walking outside, whatever it is that makes you happy and don't lose a lot of time when the stuff out there or the conversation with your boss or the static in that relationship hits you, don't lose a lot of time letting it weigh you down, right? Figure out how to shake it off and actually ignore it. Ignore that reality and come over here and create your own. Wow. So I went way down a side road, Augie, but I guess I was supposed to go there because it happened so easily. <laughs> well, I, I know that there's an old saying, you know, <laughs> when you're in the presence of excellence, you just listen and you let Aww. them talk. So now I, you were on a roll, so uh, it sounded good. Uh, that's thank why I, I didn't say a thing. Oh, thank you. But I, I, I noticed <clears throat> you mentioned um, in the, the secret. Yes. Guess what? I got the secret. Yeah. <laughs> and in there, they make it s sound so easy. Right. So simple. Right. And it almost get to the point where a lot of people got very excited and they went on and did this and they did and did and did and they redid and then they did some more. And after they were done doing, they did some again and then nothing happened because I think in the secret, they forgot to talk about something. That's my opinion. Absolutely. I want to hear yours that maybe we have to help the universe do what it needs to do for us more than maybe we understood and the thing no i agree with you the thing about the movie was right because they had they had the lamp right you rub the lamp here comes that big genie your wish is my command right so they led you to believe that if you sit home rubbing the lamp, right, the red car is going to drop in your lap or the relationship is going to show up at your door. And that's not quite true because it leads you to believe that there's nothing that you have to do, right, except rub the lamp and think about that thing that you want. 
And that's not true because based on what we were just talking about, it's it's a matter of you raising your vibration and staying in the higher vibration, right? More time, a little bit more, a little bit more as often as possible. That's how the red car comes into your life. And make sure if you're going to ask for a red car that you get the, you say to the universe, it's a car that I want to drive. It has a steering wheel. It's got four wheels. I get in it. I feel really safe when I'm in it. I love when I open the windows. I love my hair blowing out the window, right? That's the images and the feeling you want to give to the universe because the universe is very specific. If you say, I want a red car, you may end up getting a little matchbox car, that matchbox car in your mail because we weren't specific enough. So not only do we have to raise our vibration, but we have to communicate to the universe with our feelings, right? With the feelings of feeling good. So that's exactly what is true, Augie. We, that was not, it was, it was spoken to a little bit, like Bob Doyle spoke to it, Lisa Nichols did, but it wasn't really explained. So everybody was missing that piece. And the other thing is, when you were at home eating Chinese food and you forgot to get something to drink, you didn't know that you were going to meet the guy of your dreams, right? However, if you would have said no to the inspiration to go get something to drink, guess what would have happened? You wouldn't have met. Now, if, if, your, if your intention was a rocket of desire, as Abraham says, the universe is going to give you another chance. They're going to set it up again. But my whole point is you take that inspired action, right? You're eating your Chinese food like, I really, I really want to drink. I would even need to get something to drink. So you go, right? And that's when it happens. So the part about taking inspired action is the part that was missing. Yeah, I agree, Ob. And uh, when you mentioned Bob Doyle, in your uh, training for Law of Attraction, you were trained by Bob Doyle, weren't you, on The Secret? I was. He was my first certification. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the amazing Christy Whitman, you know, who created the Quantum Success Coaching okay. Academy. I mean, she's just, she's like skyrocketing. Um, yeah. And she's also best friends with Bob Doyle. Yeah. Uh, am I on to something here, but I say that when we talk about the universe creating for us unless we get um, specific the universe will create what we need not necessarily what we want especially if we don't really know what we want we will just basically get what we need and that may not be all of what we want but if we get more specific it could give the universe something to work with so they can create more than what we need. Right. And that's, that's part of, part of the manifesting process, which we're going to talk about in the class is clarity. You have to have clarity for what you desire and you have to be very specific. Now coming to clarity sometimes is a bumpy road, right? Because you're like, you don't know what you want, but all of a sudden you have an argument with somebody and you're like, man, I know what I don't want, right? And yeah. then something happens, you have, you know, you're tripping, you fall or whatever. You're like, I know what I don't want. So a lot of times when we're trying to gain clarity for our manifestation, these things that we don't want come up. And the beautiful part of it is when, you, when you're in a class like the one we're going to have, you have us to help you see those road bumps, right? Those roadblocks, right? Bumping your head against an oak tree, right? You get to see that as a gift because if you see it as doom and gloom and, oh my God, I banged my head on that tree again, right? If you see it as that, what happens? you're going to lower your vibration and you're going to get in your own way from gathering that impeccable, beautiful, laser, laser beam, clear clarity of what you do want. So yes, Augie, absolutely. Yes. And um, I saw you Linda wrote something in here. I just wanted to get to that. Shady said, after nearly 25 years in customer service type jobs, I can say you're so right. You have to get on the customer's vibration level, but be careful you don't absorb their energy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, 
and coming to clarity. It's easy to miss the mark on that one because sometimes the customer can be very, or the client can be very overbearing with their problems and explain, this is my problem, please fix me. And then you get embedded in their thinking and then your lower love vibration may be, so maybe not quite for both of us best purpose. Right, right. But, you know, any, all of us, and this is something that we're going to talk about in the class, you know, we who go out and deal with the public, I mean, I, you know, I did 26 years, 27 years of nursing. Um, people, maybe you don't go out and deal with the public, but your family is really difficult. Maybe, no. you know, your inner circle, somehow a narcissist got in there, right? So what we're going to talk about in the class is how to buffer yourself, right? How to put yourself in a bubble of energy so that when you go out, right, to do what you do and you're going to match vibration with somebody, like, like Linda said, like Shady said, you don't take their energy in. And you have a bulletproof, a psychic dart proof field around you so those psychic darts just fall off right but you know unless you've taken a class like the one we're going to have or you've done other energy work you wouldn't know to do that but i think mm -hmm. it's really really important and so incredibly helpful right to help you keep your vibration high when you're in a nice cocoon of light that nobody can get into or inflict their energy on because people are exchanging energies all the time right some some crafty people like siphon energy people who don't know their siphon, siphoning energy but they're vampires they're energetic vampires pull energy all the time well we yeah. know that they exist so it's up to us to just make sure that we are cocooned and we are in, we have really good energetic hygiene. I think that's the best way to say it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've been working together for three and a half years or so, and uh, we've had some long discussions on things like this. And you're talking about techniques, and uh, I guess I almost could call it tricks of the trade, things that normally people don't think of like simple things when they get up in the morning you decide what the day is going to be like so there is an expectation and there is an intention going into the day That's so you cool. already have it kind of paved for you things like this simple things is what you're going to bring out in the class and also the other side of it expecting it to be there right right and there's a fine line between expecting it to be there and being attached to the outcome right okay. how many of us wanted something to happen so badly that we're like is it here is it here is it coming where is it is it that is it that is it that and then what happens we're so busy looking at what it isn't that it's knocking at our front door and we're not home to answer the door of manifestation so people who are who have a tendency to do that it's better to launch your intention and then let it go. Let it go. And the only no. thing that you focus on is keeping your vibration high. And how, how am I going to keep my vibration high? When I go to work, I have to deal with what's her name. When I go to the gym, there's what's his name. When I go here, that happens, right? We, we all meet with people that could potentially bring our energy down. But no. the tools that you're going to have pocket tools right you're going to carry them around in your pocket and when you meet with somebody like oh there she is there's that one at work she's right at the water fountain waiting for me you pull out one of your t your pocket tools and you put it into action and then the interaction that used to happen you bumping heads with that person suddenly doesn't happen anymore she suddenly calls in sick more often truth i mean you know you did not will it for that to happen, but the cooperative components of the universe begin to set it up. Maybe they set it up that you get a promotion and you never have to see her again. I mean, law of attraction really, really works that way. And you can have a pocket full of pocket tools, or you could have like a sparkly tool bag. I tend to like that one. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good point, Augie. Thank you for that. Yeah, and, uh, and now I realize why you're teaching this class and not me. <laughs> so here, this is good. I just wanted to talk about this because um, Deb Boyle said, 
I'm asking the universe for a major jackpot lottery winning. Okay, so that could happen. That could happen, Deb. But let me ask you this. Do you really want the lottery or do you really want the money? You want the money, right? What if that money could come to you in another way that you're not thinking of right now? What if you launch the intention, right? You want X amount of billion, gazillion, godzillion dollars, whatever it is, right? You launch that and you let it come to you in the way that the universe decides is best for you. It could be that all of a sudden you get a letter that your great grandmother's sister left you as a as an heiress and she was a gazillion heir and they, boom here comes your money so sometimes when we're attached to the outcome no it's got to come by the lottery then we miss the other ways that it could come and the universe is limitless right the quantum field is limitless it could come up with a scenario that we can't even put together tonight right so thank you for that that helps me that helps me explain things Nancy said, does a matchbox car in the mail count? Well, it does count because the universe heard you, but, you know, we weren't specific enough. Why yeah. do I want that car, right? And here's, this is a really good point. When we're creating an intention, it's not the thing. It's not really the thing that we go for the feeling of. I want the car. Why? Because... I want to travel around and feel safe. Ooh, safe and secure. That's a good feeling because I want to go on road trips and that feels like freedom to me. Ooh, freedom. That's a good feeling. I want to be able to go to new places and create new things. Ooh, creation. That's a good feeling. So when we get down to the essence of what that thing is going to make us feel, that's the language to the universe. The universe gets very, very clear on what it is then. And then when we keep our vibration up, the cooperative components of the universe set it up and bam, you rendezvous with it. So that's so great. Thank you for that. Uh, Kimla said, love energetic hygiene. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Hot Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> That's there's going to be there's going to be so many different tools that you're talking about that lot oops what okay yeah there's going to be a lot of different tools that you're going to talk about in the class and could you talk a little bit of, just a little there's one tool that i've been using and uh, i think it's working for me because really things are working out right now yeah and that is the vision board Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I have a great, I have a great example. Let me show you. All right. So here's my vision board. And this is a perfect example about being clear. Now I covered it up because I, most of you guys know that I have the Center for Radiant Well-Being. And not only do we do, you know, alternative classes but i do exercise classes there and i help people meet their body goals so when i was thinking of the center i put this here it says i lost half my size i lost half my size now i wasn't specific i didn't get specific to the universe that that was for the center this is my vision board so what happened and I know this is a strange, strange course of events. I ended up losing weight because I was teaching a lot of classes. And then I got sick. And then I lost a bunch of weight to the point where when I got on the scale one day, right, because I used to be really heavy. I used to be 220 pounds, 210, 20 pounds. I got to the weight where I had lost half my weight because wow. I wasn't specific, that that's not for me, it's for the center, I manifested that. So that's why it's covered up. But vision boards are so amazing. And 
when you put it somewhere where you don't look at it directly, like maybe your TV's here, you could put it over there, or whatever, you look out the window, put it over there. I don't know why, I always kind of put it to my left. When you're daydreaming, or you're looking out the window, or you're watching TV, your subconscious mind is talking to the universe about all of these amazing things that you have on here that feel really, really good. Like this pair of platform Converse, those are so cool, I can feel myself walking in them right now, right? So my mind, while I'm looking at TV or, um, or looking out the window, my mind is still catching glimpses of this and talking to the universe. So to have a vision board is such a wonderful way to play in the feeling, to play in the feeling of what you want. So here's... Um, um, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn and above them it says a love rekindled right why is that on my vision board because I love their relationship they have the coolest relationship they've never had to be married they've never taken on society's rules and they've been together for freaking ever right so when i look at them i go oh and i get that warm feeling in my stomach in my heart and that's the language that goes out to the universe same thing um food is fuel that was important for me um i feel like me again so Anyway, this is my vision board. I have this beautiful um, weeping willow tree with a pathway out into a garden, which just feels phenomenal because I want that outside feeling. So when you create a vision board, you put things on the board and that's kind of the, it's kind of the telephone receiver to the universe. And when you look at the vision board and feel the feeling of what you desire on here, you're picking up the phone, even though you're not paying attention, you're watching TV or whatever it is, and you're communicating to the universe very, very specifically. I lost half my size, right? That was such a huge lesson for me to be very, very specific. So what else about the vision board, Augie? Because I know you have one. Yeah, you got more stuff on yours than I do on mine. <laughs> I, uh, but I, um, I'm also thinking that uh, for someone that come in from the cold, just cold turkey here, seeing the vision board, that might sound a little goofy, but I'll tell you, folks, every super successful person have a form of this. Some of them just got something on the bathroom mirror that they look at every day. Yeah. Some of them got something in the dash on the car. Yeah. They have yeah. something like this and only that uh, you're going to teach them how to use this to its optimum efficiency. And that's what I'm uh, really waiting to hear for, you know, more about in the class. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I can give you another example. Um, back in the 90s, when you could still flip houses, when my mother died, um, yeah, I took a break from nursing and I helped my friend run his residential investment company. And we would teach investors how to flip houses, right? They, they would come, they would buy three, you know, or five, you know, total wreck houses and then um, put them back together, make them nice and flip them. There was this one deal that I wanted us to have, that I wanted to happen so bad. And I found the font on the keyboard that are symbols, that are symbols. This is so good, listen. So I found these symbols and I created a feeling with those symbols, right? So I put a symbol, I don't know, um, I really want, I had a heart, I really want this deal, dollar signs, I really want this deal to happen, asterisks or whatever the symbols were, right, happen in record time. Only I knew what those symbols were. I printed them out, I put them on my monitor, and lo and behold, that deal happened the very next day. 
unbelievable. So you don't necessarily have to put pictures like that on your vision board, but you have to, if you want to draw some symbols or draw something cryptic, if you can just imbue the feeling of what it is that you want to happen in that, and then you look at it, the universe gets it. The universe hears your language. The universe gets it very, very clearly. And then as we keep our vibration in the higher realms, right, the rendezvous happens and we meet with that manifestation. So we're going to talk about that a lot. Yeah, I love this stuff. I yep. love this stuff so much. Let's see. Let's see. There's a lot going on in the chat room. Let's see. Doug said, yes, I tend to produce huge amounts of energy when I'm near those in a low state of energy i can feel it oh okay so you're talking about other people's energy oh you guys were talking okay all right shady yep. d still has her board kimla said she has a very funny story about hers well we need to get you on so you can talk to us about this very cool really cool yeah and uh well, you've been doing this uh, now for a good while, Nori, with uh, teaching people how the law of attraction can be implemented into their life for some really good results. Maybe, how about one or two real success stories? Wow, okay. Okay, this is a good one. I just have to open the door for Pixie because she wants to go out. My dogs, she's okay. a law of attraction dog. She only does what makes her happy. <laughs> She's so good at that. Um, She's the boss. <laughs> this is a great one. This is a great one. So my favorite color is purple. And I got, I did travel nursing in UCSD in California, in San Diego. And I went out to La Jolla and totally fell in love with La Jolla. So I actually manifested a job, right? A, another travel contract in the hospital in La Jolla. So I'm driving up these magnificent hills, right? You overlook the cliff and the ocean and the seals and Seal Beach. And it is just magnificent. I mean, it is the ocean in all of its glory. So I'm going up in these hills and there's these mansions that are very Spanish looking, you know, and I got up to the top and I was looking down and the sun was just shining at the absolute right angle. And I said, I want to live here. And that feeling, that feeling was so huge. I literally felt it go out like a rocket and I went back down you know got something to drink went home and started looking for rental properties and I was immediately led to a vacation rental property and I'm like why am I going here I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rent a vacation rental well it was winter here's a purple beach cottage right in La Jolla and because it was the winter, people, I don't know, for whatever reason, it was available for X amount of months. That was one of the fastest, most potent, vibrant success stories I ever had. It was phenomenal. Mm. But I, I, the point of it is, if you take anything away from what I'm saying, it was that minute, right, that I was up on the top of the, the mountain, right, it's not a hill, it looks like hills, up there overlooking the oceanscape, overlooking the cliffs, these beautiful houses, and this massive wave of desire built up like a tsunami and went, whoosh, and I said, I want to live here. And it was the most clear concise um, um, desire and the universe got it and then I got it so well you spoke the universal language I did of emotion feeling desire intention I want to live here and all the rest of it came into place and this this is what you know you got we got to teach people in the class Right. And it was a, it was a joyous, it was a joyous, I want to live here, not yeah. a, 
oh, I want to live here, but I don't know how I'm going to make it happen. It wasn't that, right? Everything was just so perfect. The scenery, the sun, the air, everything was so perfect that all of my senses were enlivened and that it all came together like that rocket of desire, as Abraham, as Abraham calls it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> oh. Amazing. What, what about any other when, when somebody is looking at what we're talking about right now they might say you know let's say somebody is in trouble or just a little bit behind on things what would you suggest for them to try to change their thinking a little bit in on the side of possibilities instead of thinking of gosh boy do i have a lot of problems what would they maybe do first to start changing their thinking? Right. That's a great question because, uh, well, let's talk about money, okay? Let's, let's talk about debt because that's a really heavy, damp, dank, you know, energy that, that comes over you. So if you have a lot of emotion about debt or money, and it's really heavy, right? Low vibratory. Trying to change the way that you feel about a very low vibration like that, it's too big of a leap. It's too big of a leap, right? And there's too many emotions in the way. So what we would do then is begin to feel light about other things. Forget about the money, we'll come back to it, right? But we begin to practice raising our vibration about other things and practicing like little mini, little mini manifestations along the way. Then when you get your sea legs, your manifesting sea legs, your energetic sea legs, then we could begin to shift the feeling around money. But in the meantime, we could open up to other possibilities, right? I want to win the lottery. Do you really want to win the lottery or do you really want the money? Right? So we could begin to look at other possibilities that the debt could begin to go away. And as we raise the vibration up and up, then the debt actually begins to go away because new things start opening up to you. All of a sudden, here's... um somebody that wants to wants you to do a side job or they want you to do that thing that you've come to do right massage maybe you paint maybe you're an artist maybe you teach an instrument right whatever it is you're looking at your normal job going that's never going to pay the bills but as you play in the higher vibrations all of a sudden here comes somebody who wants you to do that thing that you want to do and they want to pay you a lot of money to do it. And not only do they want to pay you money to do it, but their friends now want to do it too, right? So that's how, you know, without ever looking at the bills and going, oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay them. That's how it begins to equalize. The universe will bring you the perfect situation, right? As long as you're clear that I don't want debt anymore. I want to feel free with money. I want to be happy paying my bills, right? And there have been people that I've worked with that we've even gotten to the point where they're writing their check, right, to pay their bill. They're like writing it and putting a heart in the memo because they feel good about sending that money out. And that can really, really happen. Yeah. Good. Really, really good example, Augie. Really good. Yeah. Yeah, because everything starts in the mind. Once, once you start you creating it in the mind, it has a way to make a it from there. It. And the universe finds its way to bring it from your mind into your existence by way of the universal mind and on back into your existence. So it exactly. starts here. It does start there. Well, it starts there, right? Because or, or here. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's the way that we look at the thing that we desire, right? We we look at it, we set up that vibration in our body, right? Just like we were talking about in the beginning. Yeah. So it does start here. Yeah. yeah. The co creation that we do with our brain. Yeah. Another thing that I just want to see if I can bring into it somehow, and I'm not so sure how, but I'm sure you can figure it out, and that is the vibration 
of love. Uh, even Einstein, a year before his death, he said, I've studied the universe more than most this is, and I found that the whole universe is made from the vibration of love. Yeah. So if we impose the vibrational love on something, we love something really, not, not even necessarily the money that we want, but what the money can do for us and other people. Yes. If we impose love on that, how how strong do you think that is or what do you that's, think that's huge that's huge because like my la jolla story if you if you imagine that energy that i was feeling that was building in me like a tsunami wave of light of light right of energy it could have been the energy of love because it was so high and it was so fast and it was so oh it was so light. It was light energy. So we don't necessarily have to love our bills, but we can love the life that we're going to create when we don't have those bills. We can love the feeling um, that we're going to have that when, when we, what would the word be? Satisfy? Satisfy the debt, right? And that's, the, that's part of the that's part of the creation process coming up with the right language that feels good to you right mm -hmm. if you say the word i don't know credit card and that makes you feel horrible then we're going to give it a new name that feels lighter right so so the language that we use to create with is equally as important um and you can you can draw the feeling of love from other things and kind of superimpose it over that thing that you want to create, right? Yes. So let's say that you want to change your financial picture, your, your financial energy, right? You want to change that. But you can't look at the debt and go, oh, debt, I love you. I love you, right? There's no way you're going to feel that and be in integrity. But you can think of... Oh my gosh, do you remember when I got that puppy? Oh my God, that dog, he was my favorite dog on the planet. He was with me for 15 years. He was like my soulmate. I love that dog so much, right? When you're thinking about loving that creature because it was massive and just send a little filament of light energy out into the financial picture that you want to create, that's the love getting to it. So, mm -hmm. so that's the way that you can take true love. I mean, really, true, true love, real feelings yeah. of love, and just send a trickle of it to the thing that you want to change. But we're thinking about the end result, not the pile of bills on our desk. Yeah, yeah. really good, Augie. That was good. Yeah. Think a little bit about what we're going to learn in the class and also maybe... Uh, Whatever else you want to say about that, and maybe, I don't know, tricks of the trade, I guess I call it, but what will yeah. we be do, doing? Well, we're going to be, we're going to, first we're going to learn about vibration and how, how to quantify, how to qualify what we're feeling at every given, at any given point in time. Because if I say to you, raise your vibration, you'll be like, where's the dial, right? I, I don't know how to do that. Where's the dial? So we're going to talk about the vibrational scale. There's a lot of them. We're going to work with a um, one created for the class because some of them are really exotic and they're really vast and they're really overwhelming. So we're going to, we're going to work with the vibrational scale so that you know how to move up it, right? If you're down here in depression and despair, you can't move up to bliss. So we're just going to look at anger. We're going to move from depression and despair up into anger. That's a raise, that's a rise in the energy, right? So we're going to do a tool that's going to move you up to there. Then we're going to play with the anger, which is so much fun, right? And yeah. then we're going to take you from, from anger to, I don't know, revenge, right? <laughs> then we'll play with revenge, and then we'll take you up into indifference. Then we'll go up into happiness, right? Or neutrality, happiness, and then go up the vibrational scale. 
And we do that with really fun tools. I know Lynn, she, she's taken a class with me and we've done some of the tools. The tools are so much fun and they're just something that we play with in our imagination, in our head, you know, while we're on our feet, doing our day, doing our night. So, so those are the tips that, well, I like to call them tools and processes. Yeah. Not tricks. Yep. And tricks sound, I don't know, flimsy. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Some some of those tools and some of those things we are putting them to work actually also in the mastermind connection and there's some incredible things that has happened to people, good things that has happened to people in the group. Oh, absolutely. And some of it is very private, so they don't talk a lot about it. But uh, I get the calls, and you probably get the calls, so they you know we know about it, and from all of that we know these things work. It's just that. The establishment doesn't really want you to know, but there are thought leaders, like even these here now, they have, um, and the people that did the, the secret, they have also grown into some new thinking in relation to what they did about 12, 15 years ago with the secret. Absolutely. So I think now there is new information and better information. That's what Nori is going to bring out. So Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned before about um, forward life progression, and, and that could be a tool that you use. You know, if you have a lot of heavy, you know, dank, um, dense energy around what's going on in your life, you can actually go in through hypnosis meet your future self and connect with the energy of your future self and then when you come back the way that you look at the life right that that's there still waiting for you you look at it differently and that automatically raises the vibration maybe not completely but raises the vibration around it people have come out of forward life progressions not smoking anymore yeah because their 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 future self is not a, is not a smoker and it was it was like that easy. I know this is so incredible. Listen here, folks. <clears throat> what if you went into the future and told yourself that you know, I, a year and four months ago I did something really stupid. I don't want I don't want you to do it. What would happen if your future self decided that okay? I'm not going to do it. So you create a new timeline. Go to Broadcast Team Alpha and go down into the stream and find out what we talk about in quantum ex quantum physics. Actually, explains how these things can work. So this gets really deep. And uh, now I see that you only got about three minutes left of the show. Wow, so, that went so, fast. Nori, let us know where they can join us on this journey in the class as well as how to get a hold of you and maybe go into the future and meet yourself sure sure um so you can connect with me um nori love mail at gmail.com nori love mail at gmail.com i have the center for radiant well-being if you go to the website you're going to see a lot of exercise classes but if you fill out the subscription page, um, that's going to send me an email with your email and then I can communicate with you. You can find us at themastermindconnection at gmail.com. You can find us at Broadcast Team Alpha um, and you can text me at, you might not have a pen, 757-323-5558. Um, you can text me there, 757 757- Three two three five 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 eight. The law of attraction dog is here. She wants to come in. <laughs> so my phone died, so that's why I can't answer the rest of your comments. But I'm going to go back in and look. And thank you for the super chat, Nance. You're such a sweetheart. Thank you everybody for being here. And Augie, you want to take us out? Yeah, I could do that. And uh, one more comment, and that is that if you want to join in on a mastermind session where we do some incredible things, send us that email to themastermindconnection at gmail.com and ask for information. We will send you some information, also a link, so you can come and join us on Sundays at 2 o'clock East Coast time. And 11 o'clock uh, Pacific, uh, and I guess that is 8 o'clock in the Euro um, Central European time, including Norwegian time. So uh, <clears throat> check it out. 
I think you're going to be, you're going to like it. You're going to like it. So next week, we're going to be back, Nori. Yep. So until then, be good to each other. Thank you. Good night.